Hello, Fort Wayne. I'm thrilled to be in town tonight. Uh, the rest of my band is still asleep at the hotel. Uh, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, come early and give a little talk uh, before we perform later this evening on the same stage. So how many of you have ever had an idea for a new product or business, but were uncertain what would be required for it to succeed? A few people. OK, that's good. That's good. I'm a member of an engineering team at an engine manufacturer, and we've developed an innovative technology for analyzing the performance of large fleets of transportation and industrial equipment. I'm not here to talk about the technology, but rather to talk about the process we used to develop this technology. Established companies invest a lot in developing uh, new products, and it's generally in a top-down manner, and starting from the voice of the customer and proceeding through product development. What we did was the opposite, in that we developed a product that no one knew they needed until they started to use it. If, uh, if you have uh, entrepreneurial in uh, aspirations, I think you'll find this story interesting. If you desire to be a, a middle manager at a large corporation, uh, you probably don't want to watch this or listen to it. So we've been on quite a whirlwind for the last year in that this product turned out to be orders of magnitude more successful than we ever expected it could, could be. Um, so in recent weeks, what we've done is we've, we've done a lot of studying and research to try and figure out why, as we read a lot of books. And um, the, um, the, the reasons really are to figure out the best path forward and also to try and figure out if we can ever do this again. So one of the books is Where Good Ideas Come From by Stephen Johnson. I highly recommend this, this book if you uh, ever want to uh, try and come up with an idea. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, compelling arguments that Johnson makes is that there's no such thing as eureka moments. Rather, um, what feel like eureka moments are actually slow hunches that develop and evolve and fade into view over time. Mistakes are often viewed as a, an unfortunate side effect of innovation, but Johnson argues that they're actually necessary for innovation because that's what forces us to look at things in a different manner. He also says to brainstorm and take a lot of walks, and we fully concur with that. So an, another, uh, you know, what, an idea is one thing. What constitutes a commercially um, valuable idea? And Mark Cuban provides some good advice that also matches the experience that we've had. So there's a lot of ideas out there for businesses. Uh, you could go to Thailand and open a McDonald's franchise, for example. Uh, but what if you want to do something a little bit different, uh, uh, a little more innovative and disruptive? In that case, Clayton Christensen provides a very profound insight as to what constitutes a disruptive innovation. And that's a product or service that's actually not as good as existing products and services out there on the market today. So lar large enter or established enterprises invest a lot in developing sustaining innovations rather than disruptive innovations. And sustaining innovations are improvements to existing products. They're better mouse traps. So a classic example of a disruptive innovation is the inkjet printer, which when it was introduced was inferior, far inferior to the laser printer, but it opened up a whole new market because it was much lower cost. So applying these ideas back to the work that we do, in the past there were just a handful of experts with the skill necessary to be able to analyze the data that we work with. The technology we developed is disruptive in the sense that it has enabled hundreds of engineers to use that same data to improve products. Now, it has, it's been a long road to get where we are today, eight years, in fact. Um, and the first years we're, developed, we're involved with developing the concept, and we grabbed ideas from a lot of different places to do that. But we ran into a roadblock in that we couldn't figure out how to scale the technology, so we stopped it. We just abandoned it, stopped working on it. Two years ago, we decided to pick it up again and restart working on it with a different perspective, and that eventually led to the breakthrough that enabled us to scale the technology. So we don't know what comes next, but we look forward to finding out. Thank you very much for your time and interest. <laughs>